welcome to the course Introduction to Urban Planning. In today's session, we will cover the perspective plan under the larger ambit of different types and levels of plan. So far, we have gone through the examples of regional plan, development plan, local area plan and saw a range of case examples. Likewise, we saw a special purpose plan and annual plans and walked through different case studies to understand different types of plans. We also saw a relationship between different levels of plans. We also aligned the administrative structure with different levels of plan. Today, we are going to cover perspective plan and this lecture would be last session on different types and levels of plan. Accordingly, the coverage of today's lecture will include, we will learn about the perspective plan and its key features. We will look at the Sustainable Development Goals 2030 as one of the key example today in a considerable detail and see how the global agendas are translated to nations, states and local level plans, particularly in the context of India. We will also look at Uttarakhand Vision Plan 2030, Andhra Pradesh Vision Document 2029. We will also look at three years action agenda. We will also look at some examples of Bhopal City Vision and then we will look at Napier City Vision document, this document which is made at the city level. So accordingly, the learning outcomes for this session would include that after completion of the session, you should be able to discuss the key elements of perspective plan. You should be able to review the Sustainable Development Goals 2030 as one of the example at the global level and see how it translates to nation states and a different level, especially in context of India. You should be able to review Uttarakhand Vision Plan document, further you should be able to review Andhra Pradesh Vision document, likewise you should be able to review the three years action agenda and also discuss on Bhopal City Vision and Napier City Vision document. Moving forward about the perspective plan. A perspective plan is usually a long term plan designed for at least 20 to 25 years. Such plans are intended to attain long term aims, objectives and targets. To meet aims, objectives and targets, a perspective plan is usually divided into smaller plans. Perspective plan can be prepared at all the levels, but mostly we see at the national level state level, district level and regional level. We also see cases where perspective plans have been prepared at the city level which we are also going to see here. Further, we can see that perspective plans are also created at the global level like Sustainable Development Goals 2030 which we are going to cover today. The perspective plan has special implications and covers all the urban development indicators like sustainable development goals, spatial development goals, policies, social and economic factors. The plan is prepared keeping in mind the long term sustainability of the geographical region in context. The period of 20 to 25 years for perspective plan is so decided that it coincides with the different levels of plans which you have seen in the diagram. A perspective plan is presented in a vision document, thus it is sometimes also called as a vision plan. It therefore becomes a guide and works as framework for urban local authorities and regional development authorities for the preparation of various development plans. Unlike regular plans which are approved by the urban local bodies, a perspective plan is approved by the central government or the state government. Now let us see what URDPFI guidelines say about the perspective plan. Guidelines say that developing a vision for a region is essential for policy framework. The vision stipulates direction of growth and identification of resource potential and innovations to be adopted for the thrust areas of development. Vision integrates broad level plans with the regional or development plan. A realistic vision helps policy formulation and preparation of perspective plan. The plan is based on state resource mapping 
and analysis and assessment of potential resources. It addresses the long-term policy regarding development of infrastructure and resource mobilization, how you're going to mobilize all the resources you have and what kind of infrastructure you're going to develop. The scope of this plan covers the social, economic, environmental, spatial development goals, policies and priorities related to activities that have special and financial implications. So you will see that it is rather a broader plan and it engages with several other sectors which you may see. The purpose of a perspective plan is to provide an overall framework for preparation of detailed plans. This aspect is important to understand. Therefore, perspective plan serves as a guide for urban local authorities and regional department authorities in preparation of the regional and development plans. Now, let us look at example of sustainable development goals which are made at the global level and all nations and their respective states align their framework to meet the global agendas. As per the United Nations document, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015 provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. So like we say that we prepare it for 20-25 years and look, try to look at how our future would be. The core of this document are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals called SDGs. These are an urgent call for action by all countries developed and developing in a global partnership. They recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequality and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forest. We will quickly look at their historical timeline as per the UN document. The SDGs build on decades of work by countries and the UN, including the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. In June 1992, at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, more than 178 countries adopted Agenda 21, which is a comprehensive plan of action to build a global partnership for sustainable development to improve human lives and protect the environment. Later, the member states universally adopted the Millennium Declaration at the Millennium Summit in September 2000 at UN headquarters in New York. The summit led to elaboration of eight Millennium Development Goal MDGs to reduce extreme poverty by 2015. So you must have heard about MDGs before you got familiar with SDGs. The Johannesburg Declaration on Sustainable Development and the Plan of Implementation adopted at the World Summit on Sustainable Development in South Africa in 2000 repeated and reaffirmed the global community's commitment to poverty eradication and the environment and built on Agenda 21 and the Millennium Declaration by including more emphasis on multilateral partnerships. Later at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development Rio 20 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in June 2012, member states adopted the outcome document the future we want, in which they decided, among other things, to launch a process to develop a set of SDGs, to build upon the MDGs, and to establish the UN High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. The Rio 20 outcome also contained other measures for implementing sustainable development, including mandates for future program of work in development financing, small island developing states and more. 
In 2030, the General Assembly set up 30 member open working group to develop a proposal on the SDGs. In January 2015, the General Assembly began the negotiation process on the post 2015 development agenda. The process resulted in the subsequent adoption of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with 17 SDGs at its core at the UN Sustainable Development Summit in September 2015. Just to connect you with the parallel advancement in time, 2015 was a landmark year for multilateralism and international policy shaping with adoption of several major agreements such as Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction which was in March 2015. Then we see uh, this ABABA Action Agenda on Financing for Development uh, which came out in July 2015. Next we see Transforming Our World the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with 17 SDGs was adopted at UN Sustainable Development Summit in New York in September 2015. Then we see Paris Agreement on Climate Change which was again published in December 2015. All these documents you see may be also considered as perspective plan because they give you a future direction and also a structure for how to go about it. Now the annual high level political forum on sustainable development serves as the central UN platform for the follow up and review of the SDGs. Today the Division for Sustainable Development Goals DSDG in United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs UN DESA provides substantive support and capacity building for SDGs and their related thematic issues including water, energy, climate, oceans, urbanization, transport, science and technology. DSDG plays a key role in evaluation of UN system wide implementation of 2030 agenda and on advocacy and outreach activities relating to SDGs. In order to make the 2030 Agenda a reality, broad ownership of SDGs must translate into a strong commitment by all stakeholders to implement the global goals. The DSDG aims to help facilitate this engagement. Let us now look briefly at the 17 Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. Simultaneously, we will look at mapping document prepared by Niti Ayog, which shows how the country channelizes these SDGs through its existing structure. Goal 1 looks at ending poverty in all its form, everywhere. Nodal ministry identified by Niti Ayog includes rural development and then the central sponsored schemes identified by Niti Aayog include National Urban Livelihood Mission which uh, you, uh, you must have studied about, National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme which is again the core of the core scheme. Then you also see National Rural Livelihood Mission, National Social Assistance Program. These are all centrally sponsored scheme which are identified for translating or working for this particular goal. We also see that the document also identifies related interventions which include Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, Atal Pension Yojana. So we see how India translates the agenda in its structure to meet the global agenda. The focus of goal 2 is to end hunger achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. The identified nodal ministry is agriculture and farmers welfare. The identified schemes include national food security mission, mission for integrated development of horticulture, national mission on sustainable agriculture, national oil seed and oil palm mission and so on we see here which have been identified which will be used for attaining this goal. The relevant interventions which we can see is targeted public distribution system the PDS, 
then we see national nutrition mission, we also see national food security act and also midday meal scheme. Likewise, we see goal 3 which targets to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. The nodal ministry for taking care of this aspect is health and family welfare and then the scheme identified for this include national health mission. Then we also see human resource in health and medical education, national mission on Ayush including mission on medical plans, national AIDS and STD control program, integrated child development services. The document also identifies the relative interventions which is Pradhan Mantri Swastha Suraksha Yojana. Further we see goal 4 targets to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunity for all. The nodal ministry identified for this particular SDG is Ministry of Education and then the centrally sponsored scheme which have been identified as per the document include Sarva Siksha Abhiyan National Program, Nutritional Support to Primary Education, Rashtriya Madhyamik Siksha Abhiyan, support for education development including teachers training and audit education, scheme for providing education to mothers, minorities and disabled Rashtriya Uchtar Siksha Abhiyan. We also see further related interventions, Pade Bharat, Bade Bharat, so all these kind of interventions we see here. Further we see that goal 5, SDG goal 5 targets to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. The ministry identified is uh, women and child development and then the centrally sponsored scheme include national mission for empowerment of women including Indra Gandhi Matritav Sahyog Yojana, Rajiv Gandhi scheme for empowerment of adolescent girls. And then we also see the relative interventions like Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao, Sukanya, Samridhi Yojana, then you also see support to training and employment program for women as, uh, which is TEP, then Janani Suraksha Yojana, you also see Swadhar 2011, then you also see Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyale. So all these have been aligned with the SDGs as we are going on seeing. Further we see goal 6 which targets to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. So this is one of the goal which addresses water. Uh, the nodal ministry for this is ministry of water resource, river development and Ganga regeneration. The centrally sponsored scheme within this which have been identified for this purpose of translating the goal include National Rural Drinking Water Program, Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan, then we see Pradhan Mantri Krishi, Sincheya Yojana, National River Conservation Program, further we see the related interventions which include Namami Gange Integrated Ganga Conservation Mission Interlinking of Rivers. Likewise, we see goal 7 which targets to ensure affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. The nodal ministry identified for particular goal is power and we see that the related interventions include Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana, National Solar Mission, India Energy Policy. Then we also see power 2015, then we see few new ultra mega power projects which are related interventions which can align with this particular goal. Further we see goal 8 which targets to promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. So this particular target focuses on the economic part and employment and job part. Uh, so we see that uh, the central sponsored scheme which has been identified include national service scheme, skill development missions, social security for unorganized workers including Rashtriya Swasthya Bhima Yojana, then related interventions include Deen Dayal Upadhyaya Antodaya Yojana, National Urban Development Mission. Further we see goal number 9 that targets to build resilient infrastructure, 
promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. So, if you will connect with our previous lecture, initial lectures, we saw that how we are uh, facing the crisis of climate change and all the disasters. So, how we are working towards that through this particular goal uh, of building resilient infrastructure and promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization and how do we really foster innovation in this area. So, the nodal ministry were identified by Niti Aayog include commerce and industry. We see that the schemes have been identified for this such as broader area development program, national handloom development program, catalyst development program and so on. We also see likewise the related interventions uh, which are Pandit Deen Deyal Upadhyay, Shram Wave, Jayate, Karyakram, Minimum Government, Maximum Governance, Make in India, Startup India, Ease of Doing Business Initiative, FDI policy and so on. Moving on, we see goal number 10 which targets to reduce inequality within and among countries. So, now we are comparing at the international level and also within the national level. So, the nodal ministry which is uh, identified in is social justice and empowerment and then the schemes identified through which we will address the agenda includes multi-sectorial development program for minorities, backward region grant fund, scheme for development of scheduled caste, scheme for development of other backward classes, denotification nomadic and semi-nomadic tribes, scheme for development of economically backward classes and so on. We further see the related interventions which include grants from Central Pool of Resources for Northeastern Region and Sikkim, Uran Scheme for Youth of Jammu and Kashmir, then we also see Pahel, we also see Give It Up campaign for LPG subsidy and Mudra Yojana. Now, moving on to goal 11 which is very directly related with the urban planning is to make cities and human settlement inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. So, you may note that this is one of the most important goal which is concerned directly with urban planning. The nodal ministry which has been identified by the Niti Aayog includes Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. The centrally sponsored scheme include Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, then you also see Pradhan Mantri Adarsh Gram Yojana, then you see National Program for Persons with Disability, then we also see Amrut and all these uh, missions coming in play here. The related interventions include Smart Cities Mission which you have already seen in different special purpose plan. Then we also see Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, we see uh, we had seen Atal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation Amrut which you have already seen. Then Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana Ride which also you saw within the special purpose plan. So, all these are related interventions which align to SDGs. Further, we see goal number 12 which deals with ensuring sustainable consumption and production pattern. So, if you will remember in our initial lecture, we had talked about increased consumption pattern in the urban areas. So, this one addresses to particular issue. So, the uh, nodal ministry identified for this purpose include Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. We see the related interventions include National Policy on Biofuels, National Clean India Fund, then you also see National Energy Fund, Renewable Energy uh, which include Renewable Energy Global Investment Promotion Meet and Expo, then you look at uh, then you see Soil Health Card Scheme and so on. Now, moving on to goal 13 which targets to reduce urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Again, the nodal ministry identified for this purpose as Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and we see that related interventions include National Action Plan on Climate Change, National Mission for Green India, National Solar Mission, National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National Mission for Sustainable Habitat, National Water Mission, National Mission for Sustainable 
maintaining the Himalayan ecosystem, National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture and National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. Moving on to goal 14 that targets to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. You may see that all for India it is important as we have a huge coastline for our country. So the ministry which is involved or identified for the purpose is earth sciences and then the centrally sponsored scheme which had been documented by Niti Aayog includes conservation of natural resource and ecosystem. Then we see the related interventions include national plan for conservation of aquatic ecosystem, Sagar Mala project which deals with blue revolution. Moving forward we see goal 15 which targets to protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forest, combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. You may see that a lot of the goals really deal with the environment here. The ministry identified for this purpose in an Indian context by Niti Aayog include Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the centrally sponsored scheme which have been identified as National Afforestation Program, Integrated Development of Wildlife Habitat, Project Tiger, and if we look at the related interventions which include Project Elephant, National Environmental Policy 2006, National Agroforestry Policy, then we also see National Action Program to combat desertification. Moving on, looking at Goal 16 which targets to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all and build effective accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. The nodal ministry identified for this is home affairs. We see the centrally sponsored scheme identified include Panchayat, Yuva, Krida and Kela Bhyan. We can also see development of infrastructure facilities for judiciary including Gram Neales, integrated child protection scheme. We further see the related interventions include Digital India, Pragati Platform, Right to Information Act, finally reaching to goal number 17 which talks about strengthening the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. So this talks about how we can partner with the other countries. So the nodal ministry for this is Finance, Science and Technology. Then we have Ministry for Economic Affairs, Commerce and Industry, we also have OED and CC and then MOSP. Centrally sponsored scheme identified for this includes support for statistical strengthening. So how we are going to manage the data, so that all is indicated here. The related interventions include South-South Cooperation, India-Africa Summit, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, BRICS. Then we also see look at New Development Bank of BRICS which is NDB. We also look at SARC Satellite, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. So these are the interventions we looked at. So we have covered goal 17, we saw which goal focuses on what and as per Indian context how do we align with our different ministries and different schemes and try to meet these goals. So we have learnt about the SDGs and simultaneously also saw how Niti Aayog which is an apex planning body of the country translates the goal into the national framework. Through the mapping you also saw various schemes and programs. I would like to point out that these programs or these statements, all these schemes which you saw, the statements related to that also become the perspective plan because they give you a future direction and they give you a structure in which direction you have to go. So these perspective plan guide other kind of plans which comes out at different level such as you saw in SDG 11 where we saw the related interventions which included smart cities mission. The smart city mission statement would become the perspective plan 
as it gives larger target and the larger area which it where it wants to bring the change. Likewise, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, the mission statement of this would also become the perspective plan. Likewise, Atul Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation, Amrut would also become, the mission statement of that would also become the perspective plan. Similarly, Ride, which we have already seen that its mission statement would also become a perspective plan reference for the other detailed plan which you have seen as special purpose plan. For example, if we look at Amrut mission statement like it mentions providing basic services like water supply, sewerage, urban transport to households and build amenities in cities which will improve the quality of life for all, especially the poor and the disadvantage is a national priority. So, it is giving you a future direction, what elements it wants to cover and to what extent it wants to cover. So, this becomes a perspective plan for us and further it gives you detail like what element it is going to cover. It will ensure that every household has access to a tap with a short supply of water and a sewerage connection, increase the amenity value of cities by developing greenery and well maintained open spaces like parks. Further, it would reduce pollution by switching to public transport or constructing facilities for non-motorized transport. All these outcomes are valued by citizen. We also see other benchmark will be targeted following a step by step process after achieving the benchmark of universal coverage. We also see that uh, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India has launched the service level benchmark initiative covering water supply, wastewater, solid waste management and storm water drainage. So, these all become kind of a perspective plan example for us. So, you can see the Amrut uh, mission statement here for your reference. We further see that in this year 2021 SDG report India rank at 120 among 165 countries with 60.1 SDG index score. The SDG index is an assessment of each country's overall performance on the 17 SDGs giving equal weight to each goal. So, we see we are keep, keeping on comparing how our performance is. Now, we look at the central level in India and see how do we work and collaborate to develop a vision aligned with the SDGs. You are looking at the newly released report by the Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is a central level apex body for planning in our country. Earlier we had planning commission. Niti Aayog decided to estimate the progress through a single measurable index that would serve as an advocacy tool and trigger action at the state level. So, this would also encourage the states to participate and perform better. Through this mechanism, it encourages states to participate and improve their condition with respect to SDGs. We further see here from the report that each state aligns its intervention to national goals. In this SNP from the report, you can see Tamil Nadu and Delhi leading in attaining goal 1 of no poverty. Likewise, you see Caroline Chandigarh leading zero hunger goal. Likewise, we see in the report the overall performance of each state across all SDGs. Green shows the front runner and yellow indicates the performers. This was at the national level. Now, we see that how at the state level these perspective plan are integrated. Many of the states have aligned the SDGs with their vision document like we can see in case of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh. Now, we will briefly look at the vision document of Uttarakhand to understand how the SDGs are further translated at the state level. Uttarakhand perspective plan report is framed with the background of implementation of the 17 sustainable development goals. The document is named Uttarakhand Vision 2030 prepared in 2018 by Department of Planning, Government of Uttarakhand with support of Institute of Human Development Delhi. As per the Vision 2030 document for the state keeping in mind the implementation of the SDGs, following visions were framed transform the Uttarakhand economy into a prosperous, 
healthy state such as that people are educated and gainfully employed in an equitable society, synergy between the environment and the inhabitants is enhanced and the development process is sustainable and inclusive. So, we see how we are aligning with the SDGs, our goals. The framework for the vision document for Uttarakhand envisages people at the center of development process. 15 SDGs have been categorized into four groups, each of which contributes towards enhancing the development process for the people of Uttarakhand. So, these four categories which have been identified in this include sustainable livelihood comprising of SDG 1, 2, SDG 8, SDG 9 and then we see uh, human development which comprises of uh, SDG 3 which deals with good health and well-being, SDG 4 which deals with quality of education, SDG 6 which deals with clean water and sanitation. We further see the group 3 which is social development comprising of SDG 5 which deals with gender equality, SDG 10 which deals with reducing inequality, SDG 16 peace, justice and strong institutions. We further see other group which is environmental sustainability which comprises of SDG 17 which is affordable and clean energy, SDG 11 which is related with the urban planning again I would say sustainable cities and communities SDG 12, responsible consumption and production SDG 13, deals with climate action SDG 15, life on land. So, based on these four grouping further areas of actions have been decided in this particular vision document. So, the state as per the focus area created the thematic areas and created aim for improvement in order to attain the vision 2030. Based on each focus area and SDGs baseline assessment was taken up and strategies were developed for the state. The link to the document is provided for you in the detailed reading. So, we see how the global agendas are translated in the nation and further down at the state level and to the sectors. Likewise, you can see the example of Andhra Pradesh Vision Plan 2029 where they have aligned the vision to the SDGs and the strategies are created sector wise. The sector include agriculture, then you see the economic and public finance management, then you also see education, you can see governance, green mechanism, health and nutrition, infrastructure related with energy, transportation and communication, you also see industries and MSME, skill development, social development, social infrastructure, vulnerability and poverty, then you also see tourism and hospitality, you can also see urban development sector, then you can also see water resource institution and management sector. So, how all the SDGs have been translated into sectors and within each sector key areas for interventions have been identified. The link to the vision is also provided for your reading, you can read it further to have a better understanding. Another example we can see is the three year action agenda has replaced the previous five year plans which was prepared by planning commission of India. We can see another example of perspective plan in form of concept plan through the case of city vision framework document of Napier city in New Zealand. So, we had seen this earlier as well in types of plans when we covered there. So, we can see how the vision is formulated and uh, the principle behind the vision is given and then all the framework is given provided for that. We see that Napier city is located in New Zealand. It provides vision, overall strategy, principles, area framework, initiatives and programs and projects. So, we see how even the concept plan at the city level may also qualify for the perspective plan. We can also see another example of vision statement in the draft Bhopal development plan of 2031 where it states that the residents of the city want to make Bhopal best livable city, conserve and protect the eco-sensitive areas and heritage and so on. So, we see that how the perspective plan provides the direction and framework for achieving it. However, the form and nomenclature may vary. Summarizing what we saw today, we saw about the perspective plan and its key features. We looked at the SDG Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030 
as one of the key example of our perspective plan at the global level and how it has been translated from nation to the states and to the different sectors of the local area plan. Further, we looked at the examples of Uttarakhand vision plan, we looked at Andhra Pradesh vision documents, we also looked at three year action plan, uh, Bhopal city vision and we also looked at the Napier city vision document. So that is all for today, you can further look at the references what we have and then the suggested reading and references list. Our coverage was limited with the scope to make you aware of the topic. There are enormous readings and movies available to explore. Few are suggested here. This is not an extensive list. You may feel free to suggest more from your experience. Please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your concerns you have. Do share your opinion, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. That's all for today. Thank you.